le roi Jean Le Cam sur un très fameux bateau à Noël. C'est chouette d'avoir de la compagnie. This is the Sailing World on Water, January 1, 2021. In the Von D. Globe, Boris Herman, in the Southern Pacific Ocean, had a meet up and pass, of legend, John Le Cam and Yes We Cam. The Hitana team on Edmund de Rothschild, are once again on standby for a favorable weather system to start their attempt to beat the Jules Verne trophy time record. On Sadobo, who cancelled their Jules Verne attempt, life returns to normal heading back to base. The leaders of the Von D. are past Nemo Point headed to Cape Horn, expected this weekend. Boris Herman and Sea Explorer Yacht Club de Monaco shares his Christmas. It's birthday time for Clarice Creamer on Bank Populaire 10, happy birthday Clarice from us all. The Ineos Team UK have their AC75 out of the shed and trialing. Vittorio and Pietro have some observations on their plight. Luna Rosa are also back on the water, and the boys discuss, how they don't have runners. And so we turn our backs on the year, 2020. We will not miss it. Le critère c'était 11 jours, 15 heures à Bonne Espérance. Donc on a un peu descendu notre ambition par rapport à la dernière fois. Ici c'est complètement bloqué. La mer elle tombe vite, mais au moment où on parle, elle est encore forte. Donc plus ou moins acceptable ici le 29 au soir, quoi. Demain au soir. Mais je trouve que celui de 29, euh, il n'est pas assez bon, quoi. Si aujourd'hui on était le 15 novembre, on avait déjà fait un gros croix dessus, quoi. Moi je trouve qu'en plus, en plus les routages. Ils sont pas top, ils sont quand même très compliqués à réaliser. Tu vois, ça fait très peu de probabilité, mais il en existe encore. C'est 5% de, de bonnes fenêtres. Donc là, on approche effectivement de la deuxième partie du stand-by et on commence à regarder des fenêtres qui ne sont pas très bonnes. Et les fenêtres qui ne sont pas très bonnes dans l'Atlantique Nord, comme on est en train de regarder, elles peuvent ensuite redevenir très favorables parce que le sud passe bien. On a toujours des, des petites probabilités que ça passe très bien en fait et euh, on ne veut pas gâcher ses probabilités. On imagine un départ demain matin, même si on a encore une fois très peu de chances de, de partir, mais euh, on reprépare tout comme si. Parce que si on part, ça va être tout demain matin. Euh, donc il faut être prêt. Moi, j'ai amené mon matériel vidéo. Merci. C'est mon cinquième, je pense. Cinquième test. Hein, je pense que c'était peut-être euh, pas le quatrième ou le cinquième. Ouais, C'est vrai que quand on... On est conscient de l'enjeu qui nous attend, ça reste une formalité par rapport aux épreuves qu'on va être amené à vivre. Ensemble, le fait que le temps, ils ne sont, ils sont pas terribles du tout. Quoi. Là, on avait envie de partir, mais je crois que la fenêtre n'était vraiment pas bonne et ce matin, ça se confirme. Donc, pas de regret, vélo, voilà. Moi, j'aurais préféré faire du bateau quand même. Maintenant. Timing 
totalité du sud-est. On fait la transition entre l'Afrique et le Brésil. C'est incroyable la vitesse à laquelle on, on change d'hémisphère, on change d'océan, on change de système de C'est des bateaux qui rendent la planète quasiment accessible au cerveau. Euh, cette nuit, il y aura peut-être un empanage ou deux. permettre à tout le monde de récupérer, de dormir. This 2020-21 Von D. Globe Round the World Race Report is brought to you by Pantaneous Professional Race Cover, your tailor-made racing yacht insurance. Tonight the leaders of the Von D. Globe Race are nearing Point Nemo, the spot furthest from land on the planet. Point Nemo is so far from land, the nearest humans are often astronauts. The International Space Station orbits the Earth at a maximum of 258 miles or 416 kilometers. Meanwhile the nearest inhabited landmass to Point Nemo is over 1,670 miles or 2,700 kilometers, away. The area is officially known to space agencies as the South Pacific Ocean Uninhabited Area. In particular, the Russian, European and Japanese space agencies have long used it as a dumping ground, because it is the point on the planet with the fewest human inhabitants and the quietest shipping routes. Over a hundred decommissioned spacecraft are thought to now occupy this spacecraft cemetery, from satellites and cargo ships to the defunct space station Mir. At just under 2,000 miles to Cape Horn, the leaders of the Von D. Globe have a long, tough week of work, ahead to reach the big left turn, the release out of the Pacific, back into the home ocean. There is some relief that speeds are quick again, as their position on the depression finally yields reaching conditions, cold southwesterlies for the chasing peloton, Northwesterly for Yannick Bistaven in Matercock and Charlie Dallin Apivia. And while there were predictions that Bistaven might run away from his pursuers, Dallin is less than 90 miles, or about six hours behind. The pack is still tightly grouped, but Damien Seguin Group Apicil is up to fourth, and Isabel Jost MACSF fifth. Seguin is fastest of the top 10 this morning. Although it is cold and wet, Skipper's energy reserves are restored for the meantime after the lighter wind period over Christmas. This depression should roll away by Tuesday, when there might be a little period of respite, before the long assault on the eastern Pacific, when conditions look challenging for the latter part of the week. It still looks like Saturday 2nd January, for the leading duo at the Cape. And with the new systems coming in from behind, there should be more compression among the top 10 or 12 boats, maybe even a chance for Creamer, Tripon, and Atanasio, to close into the pack a little more. All the way back to Cape Lewin, or more for Sebastien de Stremau, who is still on a course towards Tasmania, the fleet also seems to be compressing under the influence of the southern depressions. Finland's Ari Hosela, Stark, should thus cross the longitude of Lewin, 200 miles behind Alexia Barrier, TSE for My Planet, who passed Lewin Sunday night having had some repairs to make over the weekend last, before tackling the end of the Indian Ocean that Manuel Cousin, Group Seton, and Kojiro Shiraishi, DMG Mori Global 1, should emerge out of late today. Already in the Pacific, Jeremy Bayou, Cheryl, and Stefan La Derison, Time for Oceans, have the start of a nasty low coming down from Tasmania. On the contrary, in front of this front, Pip Hare, Medallia, and Arno Boy's ears, La Mia Colleen Artisans Artipol, have caught close to Alan Rura, La Fabrique, who had his keel problems three days ago.
Hi, Merry Christmas! This is completely exceptional. Look at the spray. We're doing a good speed, 17 knots. In 13 knots of breeze. That's foiling. some match racing going on. Jean Le Cam. Jean Le Roy. And to make Christmas perfect, I sit here in the sun. I just sit here against a dip witch. And I listen to a podcast that all my friends and partners and sponsors made with greetings. And it's absolutely amazing. It's crazy to, uh, to have this connection just through voice. Thank you all so much. It's so nice. I have this little speaker here. And I had my lunch with you guys. They sing. Some make music. And people from all over. Monaco. New York. Hamburg. Paris. Such a great Malizia family. The Yacht Club people. Army. Stands. Ciao. <laughs> Some very funny ones and uh, some thoughtful comments. Um, really nice. I had to cry a bit. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's crazy. Look at this sea. Relatively flat and the ideal breeze for just foiling. There you see your competitor. We were, uh, I was three miles behind him this morning. At 10 knots or below 10 knots, he's slightly faster. Above 10 knots, I'm faster. And now I'm much faster. He's bearing away a little bit, coming down to us. Because he's kind of, I was sitting here eating lunch and so on. I sat in the in back of boats at like inshore racing and then you would observe the other one like I do now, I mean, he was much closer at the, at the moment and you would think, ah, did, did, does he gain a little bit of bearing? Uh, does he lay, gain a little bit of gauge? What's going on? Oh, look, this, this is typical for the day. The, the thing has uh, eased off a lot, the wind here. So it's irregular, it's on and off. Sometimes I'm underpowered with the J2 to a little sail area with the J2 sometimes and I did a couple of um, swaps uh, J2 uh, code zero but uh, you can't do it every half an hour so I have to find a compromise if it stays like this I just start winding in the main but it is absolutely gorgeous day a 
let me uh, let this be my present for you in the sun on the ocean high pressure and you know what I think in theory right now we are in third position because we have been in fifth at the last update just behind Jean but now we are clearly ahead of Jean uh, by one mile and a half <laughs> And um, on the tracker there was um, eight miles we were behind Thomas Rouillon. He was going seven knots and since then I'm going like 15, no, I don't know, 13 knots. And it's a couple of hours ago, so in theory maybe uh, on paper we are, we are in third place for a tiny moment of glory. I think he is still in a much better position there and uh, will... Uh, will make his mile soon on the but yeah he will be on his good side port tech he will have his foil and he will drag away i guess but uh, happy where we are and uh, thank you all so much for these uh, christmas greetings messages pictures uh, it was a really nice christmas for me thank you and uh, <laughs> Look this cloud. Just got under this corner and that's where the wind dropped. Uh -huh. Luckily I took advantage of the sun out here as, as long as, the, as it was there. Uh, now it's gone. So I wish you all a Merry Christmas, best time with your friends and family and uh, yeah, have good holidays. Cheers! Je vous remercie du fond du cœur, vous êtes trop chou, je vous aime plus que tout et, euh, et c'est absurde parce qu'on fait tout ça, on fait des grandes aventures et en fait euh, le plus important c'est euh, notre famille, nos amis et, euh, et les gens qu'on aime. Donc euh, je ne suis pas sûre qu'il y ait besoin d'avoir des globes pour s'en rendre compte, mais en tout cas vos messages m'ont fait extrêmement plaisir et j'espère que je vais vous voir dans pas trop longtemps. If you're taking your racing to the next level, make sure your insurance is up to the challenge. Pantaneous Professional Race Cover. Ineos flight uh, problems, kind of a mess, uh, this for uh, Sir Ben Aisley. 
but can be solved or not. Uh, actually, we, we can think that they are so far from the uh, from the solution of this. So uh, I think probably it's a big issue, but uh, quite easy to solve, no? And we try to a little bit uh, uh, think about what could be the problem. And obviously, the first thing you think about when when there is something uh, which is not going well uh, uh, in the flight, uh, uh, you think about the foils, no? So you think that they they got the wrong foils. Obviously, they have the biggest foil of them, them all. So uh, you think that uh, maybe mm, they got uh, the foils totally wrong. Actually, I don't think they are uh, that wrong on the foils, no? No, uh, they, they, they cannot be, no. I mean, the profiles, uh, they, they have been studied uh, quite a bit, obviously, so it cannot be a huge problem of profiles. Uh, also, the shape of the foils uh, themselves, uh, it's a standard one, no? They try something different from the others, but uh, they then they went for uh, a, y, a Y-shaped uh, foils uh, as uh, other competitors like Luna Rossa or American Magic, no? Exactly. And actually, we, we know uh, quite a lot about uh, uh, foils, uh, sections, uh, and uh, uh, type of, uh, let's say, geometries. So it's very well known from everybody who works in the field uh, what each change in the, in the foil form, uh, geometry, and, and so on uh, is actually doing uh, uh, when you change them. So, it's uh, totally impossible for me that they they got the wrong shape uh, and now they are struggling saying ah no we 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 want uh, smaller foils uh, and with uh, uh, with much different area luna rossa without runners as can read noticed uh, during the commentary official commentary uh, of the achieve world series Luna Rossa was uh, the only boat with a big difference uh, from the other, which is the total absence of uh, runners. So the, the mast was uh, just uh, uh, up with the shrouds, uh, lateral shrouds. The spreaders are a little bit swept and uh, obviously the, the head stay. So uh, we know that the mast is uh, quite a huge mast, also thanks to the D-shape uh, uh, which makes it uh, uh, quite big. Um, the uh, mast is standing on a ball, uh, let's say, uh, on, the, uh, on the deck, so it's uh, capable of being rotated and, uh, uh, and also being a little bit uh, uh, torsioned, let's say. Uh, so it's for sure a, a huge uh, uh, structure and it doesn't need the, uh, the runners structurally but uh, the choice of uh, not having the runners is actually uh, quite uh, an important so, so one. It implies uh, a lot of things. First of all, uh, they are doing this uh, in uh, light winds. Uh, most probably they use them. Uh, we, we didn't have the chance to, to see actually, but for sure they are using it, uh, runners uh, uh, during training and uh, they used it uh, in the second day of racing. So, so it's not a choice uh, that uh, is... Uh, always uh, uh, done but uh, the fact of uh, not using them in light winds uh, implies a different for example a different uh, missile design so you are not bending the mast as much as you uh, normally would do if uh, you had uh, the, the runners on in fact there is a huge difference for example uh, between Lua Rossa and uh, Team New Zealand in the same sailing conditions you see uh, clearly that uh, uh, New Zealand mast is uh, much more bent than uh, Rosa one. See the full videos at facebook.com forward slash world on water or our website boatson.tv.